And we're live. Welcome to a special edition of the Common Stack Review. It's the year-end review. There's been so much happening this year. It's insane. Uh, it, and it's, uh, it's, I'm just going to get into it because there's just too much to talk about. Uh, doo -doo. Let me share my screen. So earlier in the year, can you believe it was a year ago, less than, uh -oh, just less than a year ago that we actually started the that we actually launched the common simulator. This is a narrative expose on, on what uh, we want to do with collaborative economics and enabling communities to design their own economic solutions for, uh, for public, public goods. So uh, if you haven't played the common simulator, you gotta get in there. It's really fun and it's a fun story. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, and we also really uh, started this whole concept of uh, collaborative economics that uh, in fact at first it was called participatory economics uh, but then we found out that was a thing that's actually like a political movement like a socialist uh, political movement thing so that that didn't really uh, that wasn't a perfect fit when you go to wikipedia and check that out but we actually ended up uh calling it collaborative economics which we've been using and and uh trying it out with the tec and seeing if they can be the first community to ever collaboratively design their own economic system and monetary system. This is in uh, somewhat different than a lot of cryptocurrencies that are really focused on the tech. Uh, they, they have uh, experts design their economy as opposed to uh, and in back rooms where they all of a sudden now they have privileged information, which for better or worse makes creates an environment for technocracy. And we've, uh, this whole, a lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about is all about how we actually try to educate the community uh, in, and make sure that uh, the designers and the community are working together to uh, create the, the right solution, uh, the right design, economic design, uh, which creates education and political discussions and in the end, an educated community that can make good, smart decisions. Uh, so that started, of course, with the Hatch dashboard, uh, which was super cool. So uh, this this was our first like prototype of a dashboard. I don't know if you remember this. It was very difficult to use. It was it was uh, very uh, technical and and confusing. And uh, but we it was really interesting because there was one this one section of it. I mean, it worked it worked out great. And it's super cool. There's this one section right here where we have predicted individual impact hour results. And uh, this sparked a huge debate in the community. So after we just after we collaboratively uh, designed the hatch and ended up with Goldilocks v4 as the winning proposal, uh, we started into another, another impromptu debate uh, which was the, uh, around impact hours distribution, which became dubbed as the praise debates. They were, they were heated. Uh, it was uh, really interesting because one of the things that impact hours and praise uh, and the C-Stack token, in, in a sense, uh, were designed to do was to uh, reward labor and expertise and acknowledge labor and expertise so it can be rewarded in the initialization of an economy. And there was uh, some fair arguments to say that the way the praise uh, system ended out, the results may not have had a good analysis or a good recognition of expertise, token engine, engineering expertise. And so uh, there were very there are many proposals uh, that that came out. Well, actually, so then so after doing a bunch of research and grabbing all of the praise data, because in the end with the praise system, every single uh, impact hour that was distributed had praise associated with it. It was such a rich data set for, to do a reward system analysis. We actually decided to have a voting session, uh, an impact hour intervention proposal. And so uh, anyone could propose uh, a, a new solution for how to, uh, take the data that we have and, and transform it into new impact hour distribution. And there were, uh, and there was one really important clause uh, that came, of course, from the gravity work that was, what if, in, in the proposal starting out, it was, what if there is a polarized scenario where two different proposals have an evenly split majority of votes in the runoff? Well, then uh, the two authors have to come together and collaborate on a result, on a final result. 
And this happened. Uh, we had a crazy, uh, we had two proposals. One was completely throw away the, the system, praise Mageddon, and let's build a new one uh, based off of this idea. And then the second one was no intervention, no abnormal intervention. And they, they split the vote 51% to 49%. And instead of the classic, um, what happens in normal political debates, the, the TEC and, uh, and under the guys, under, you know, the, the, our, the common stacks real like advisement and making sure that gravity and conflict resolution was, was prevented beforehand, uh, ended up doing something different than what happens in normal political situations. They compromised. We, 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 we uh, split the baby in half and, and uh, actually compromised the two proposals into one, one proposal uh, that uh, gave 51% of the results to the one and 49% of the results to the other. And we ended up uh, um, going through with the hatch under, under those uh, numbers, which is just really interesting. And in the end, this praise debate and, and research uh, actually kicked off the creation of another group called the Governance. It's it's really weird because it's the end of the year, and uh, you know I wish Livia were here to present the Governance. In fact, there's only five of us here, so it's kind of weird to do this review with uh, so few people because there were probably like I don't know 14, 15 core team members during the year that contributed to uh, to all this happening. So, but here we are. So. I'll present this for Livia and Jess helped start the Governance uh, off of the praise research and uh, started doing a lot of reward system research. And, uh, in, and eventually we started a reward system working group based off this to rebuild the praise system. The praise system does a great job at measuring qualitative uh, data, but it doesn't do a good job at measuring or it, it doesn't need to use that process for quantitative data. And so the reward system working group is uh, making an effort uh, that look at all these great team members, Ryder, Mateo, Christopher, Nuggan, Mitch, ViviV, Chewy, Livia, Zeptimus, and MS. Uh, their, their goal is to build a new reward system that integrates source cred, a lot of Discord bots, and the praise system into one, um, into one system that also has a really cool, like, um, uh, uh, analytics dashboard behind it. So uh, uh, it's amazing how what was a very contentious conf conflict within the TEC community transformed into something incredible uh, that the uh, Common Stack hopes to, um, you know, we took uh, this conflict and made the best out of it and really took all of the data that we could to create a new reward system. So that's very exciting. And then of course we actually did the hatch uh, once we had all of this, uh, uh, my video is frozen. Can you guys still see me? Or am I? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, the the then we actually had the hatch, which is so cool. So we we reached the minimum goal. Uh, the first commons ever hatched. We raised uh, the TEC raised uh, one about one point five million dollars to. Uh, fund public goods in the token engineering space. So that was super amazing. This of course is the work of the Common Swarm uh, and OneHive and Common Stack all partnering together to build this, uh, to build this epic system. And, uh, and then from, from there after the hatch, we went deep down to the collaborative economics rabbit hole and uh, built a new dashboard. You can see it's much prettier. This time we let Marco go into making designs instead of just hacking something together uh, with, with panel, uh, uh, our normal library. But uh, we, so we have this very beautiful dashboard that we've been using the last several months to collaboratively design the Commons upgrade, taking the hatch DAO that has $1.5 million into it and, and uh, designing how we will use the bonding curve and the uh, um, conviction voting setup. So it's super cool and uh, continuing down this collaborative economics rabbit hole. Another thing that was really cool that needs to be, uh, that it's probably not understood or appreciated how important this is for collaborative economics, but we built, uh, the Common Swarm built EVM CRISPR. And EVM CRISPR allows you to do very complex changes to a DAO that be, uh, in Aragon DAO that before was would have required several votes all to pass, and it would be really annoying to do. And so, uh, for instance, 
Uh, this, well, I'll show later the Commons upgrade, but uh, EVM CRISPR, not only does it make it possible to do these complex votes, which before it was possible, but it was really like, uh, you had to trust a dev to do it. Now with EVM CRISPR, uh, non-developer people, I mean, you have to be code curious uh, to want to play with this, but you can actually read what it's saying. You know, I want to install this agent application to this and grant these rights to this application to be able to do this and then transfer this much RAPTX die to there, right? And it's all written in almost English. So that's super cool. And along with EVM CRISPR, we worked with the Garden Swarm to launch the very first uh, platform for launching a conviction voting DAO, which is called Gardens. Uh, already the Giveth and Bright ID and Agave and, uh, and a few other uh, um, projects have launched their own conviction voting DAOs, which is just wild, you know, for so, the Common Stack and Giveth really created conviction voting. Uh, out of nothing, and then uh, at least the concept, and then OneHive implemented it. And now this year, we actually have several DAOs using conviction voting, which is super cool. And we also have the first implementation of the augmented bonding curve. After so many years of talking about conviction voting and the ABC, now we actually have these things that are real. Uh, and so that's just super cool. And, uh, but of course, we haven't launched the ABC. Uh, we've only done this stuff in testing, but we do have the commons upgrade. Uh, the, the ABC got audited and all of these things. And so now we're ready to launch the commons upgrade. In fact, Sam has been on vacation for the last month because it's just like, oh, we're done. We're done. When is this thing going to launch? Um, but uh, we decided to take it slow and launch uh, launch in our time to to uh, in the new year after all the holidays so we can be ready to launch uh, to to start building the uh, uh, together with the TEC to start like uh, funding and advancing token engineering together. But yeah, you can look at how cool this, look how complex the commons upgrade uh, proposal is, you know, and, and all of it ends up being in English. It's like, okay, we got to give the DAO voting app permissions to do all of this, these things. And we have to allow the augmented bonding curve to actually mint tokens and make buy orders, make sell orders. And, uh, you know, this is something that any community member can actually review and ask questions like, hey, well, you know, why, why do we need this? What, what is the migrations tools doing? And trying to get it so that this is a repeatable experiment, a repeatable thing for other communities to do. Uh, and, and we've done that. We've got it to a point where we can repeat this process for other commons. Uh, and now we just have to finish follow through with the TEC. It's a very, been an incredible year. It makes me wonder what we did the years before. We did so much this year. Uh, and at least, at least on the development side. And Tam, I, I'll pass it to you to, uh, to talk about uh, so many other, other things that we've done. Oh my God, how am I going to follow that? <laughs> that was super, uh, super exciting. Okay, uh, before I share actually, I guess I'll say, as uh, Griff mentioned, uh, Olivia, Ine, Christopher are on vacation, and Ikene sadly uh, got sick, so he also wasn't able to join us today. Uh, and this time last year, I looked through our amazing archive on YouTube. Uh, we looked a lot different. It was uh, sprint number five was our uh, was our uh, year end sprint last year. So uh, this was very cool to sort of go back and see. Um, and then for the 2020 year-end review in terms of sprints, um, well, from five on, we from 11 on, we started getting a really creative with the naming. Uh, Ivy and I were collaborating on different kinds of cool agricultural names, and then eventually she just took over and like we're banging them out like money, and the things were so great. Uh, and we are at number 28 now, so uh, we've had a really fun year of, um, of excellent sprints. And of course, um, with every sprint comes a review, a retrospective. So we started retrospectives in sprint six um, and have been doing them 
pretty consistently since then. Uh, one thing we did learn uh, during these sprints was uh, so much information, I mean, during these retrospectives was so much information comes out um, that maybe isn't evident unless we're actually really focusing on uh, things that went well, things that could be done better and actions to improve. And then there's a few canceled postponed ones. And at some point we were like, ah, we can never postpone one again. Uh, they, they bring too much information uh, for, for how we can improve, like continuous improvement. Um, uh, this year was another huge year because some of us actually met in person. Uh, one of the sprints we were, a few of us were in Vienna. Uh, let's see, there was, um, I don't know if I can get a good video of all of us together at the table. I think maybe it comes at the end. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. So there was a point where we were all able to actually take a photo at the end of this uh, sprint call together, and that was very neat. Uh, we also were at ETHCC. Many of the people from Common Stack uh, joined, as well as uh, some people from TEC. And we have a bunch of new members this year, uh, new, new team members. Maria, Yunese, Kenne joined us. Uh, Christopher is leading uh, two projects, product development for Trusted Seed Dashboard and Reward System. Tiago is now with us alongside Jessica and Regen working on the Regen partnership. And Max joined us to Dow the Trusted Seed in 2022. So that's going to be exciting. Uh, he got started already, but uh, main, main, um, most of his work will, will really kick off in the new year. And Jessica and uh, Jeff are full-time researchers at Block Science now and still research contributors with the Common Stack. And then we have uh, team members who have moved on. Chris moved to community manager role at Tally, and Dan moved on to a community architect and Dow Sherpa at IOTEX. And uh, we still keep in touch with them and miss them very much. Uh, there's going to be a lot more news from Common Stack that Ivy and Maria and Tiago will share. So I'm going to share some things about uh, news from the TEC. So the hatch opened uh, in the um, the uh, summer in July of this year, and uh, of course it was only open to trusted seed. And uh, a month later, it closed, raising 1.57 million wrapped X die. Uh, so there was a lot of celebrations this summer, a very cool NFT uh, just for hatchers um, was shared. Um, and yeah, and now we're at the process of just on the, and the like very, very end of launching the Commons upgrade, which will make the TEC available to the public, of course, with the launch of the uh, augmented bonding curve. Uh, there are a lot of people now in the TEC. It's a very large, thriving community. Um, and there are now 14 stewards, Chewy, Eduardo, Griff, Ivy, Juan Carlos, Lauren, Olivia, Mitch, Nate, Shevnam, myself, Vive IV, YGG, and Zeptimus. And we cover 12 working groups. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of the major accomplishments of these working groups this year. With the TEC as the first field deployment of our cultural and technical build, I think it's really important to highlight um, the success that the TEC has had uh, and um, the hopes for these design patterns being repeatable for future commons, looking at the TEC as uh, the, the first successful use case. Uh, there is a working group called Gravity, which is responsible for conflict transformation in the community. Um, they had two Graviton sessions, so trained over 35 Gravitons in the TEC community in nonviolent communication, mediation, leadership, um, and subjects along these lines. Uh, there's two semesters running about eight to 10 weeks each, uh, and there'll be more to come in 2022. Uh, so big praise to Juan Carlos for having led these uh, trainings and this working group for so long. I don't know if I can say enough about SoftGov actually. Uh, under Livia's leadership, the, the cultural build has been um, so robust and such a, a thread as part of the fabric of the TEC. Um, the, the SoftGov group has steered the TEC through you know, fair weather and stormy weather, um, and was a launching pad for the governance um, working uh, with the governance DAO and the rewards system work that's being done, research that's being done in the wider TEC community now. Uh, the polycentric, let me, oops, the share is in my way. 
Um, so the the SoftGov um, um, launched or, or like built this TEC handbook, um, which is sort of a overview of the mission, vision, values, a lot about the cultural build and um, the hatch and different working groups and cultural components, um, as well as the polycentric governance framework that we're using. So a lot of effort sort of went into designing this and, and implementing it. Uh, decision making for every kind of uh, decision that needs to be made, whether it's decisions that affect individual members, working groups, or entire communities, and what tools and procedures we'd use to do that. Um, they also uh, wrote the community covenant that will be uh, used uh, as, as soon as we go live. Um, and yeah, gosh, there's just so much. Um, the cultural practices uh, in the TEC um, and really studying uh, what the cultural practices are and how we can actually evaluate whether they're working or not. So some metrics to be able to determine whether the cultural practices as designed are actually effectively implemented and producing the desired results. So so much went into uh, SoftGov. Um, launching a boardroom so that we have a single place where all of the different kinds of voting that we're using on Snapshot is, um, is uh, together in this one space. Um, yeah, there's just so, so, so much. I probably missed like 90% of what SoftGov is, has done this year, but I tried to hit the, the high notes. Uh, the TEC Labs has uh, this, had this amazing fall semester. So we look forward to what's to come. Uh, as well, Metaverde uh, launched the uh, Crypto Zombies Solidity course that ran for, I think it's about eight weeks. So that was another highlight of labs this year. Uh, Communitas under Eduardo's leadership has attracted so many who want to keep the high standard of the warm and personal, personal onboarding experience and community management in the TEC. So there's been contributors like MS, Gideon, LBS, Jean, Mount Manu, and so many others who've really come to um, regularly to the working group sessions who have worked on the experience for new members, as well as the experience for existing members in our community and making sure that we have the roles and processes in place to make sure that people land in the TEC and are warmly greeted and are helped matched with the skills that, that they bring to the community. The stewards working group is really focused on role modeling, uh, servant leadership and you know busting coordination challenges wherever they arise. Uh, I have something for Omega. The Omega Working Group, um, um, Shebnem and uh, Mert, who's now taken on uh, coordination lead uh, for the Omega Working Group, has submitted two proposals to the TEC for uh, TE ethics participatory research and a consilience library. Uh, and these are two really fundamental to token engineering proposals that will be launched through uh, uh, the Omega Working Group. So they have really an academic and philosophical approach to topic, to, token engineering topics and concerns. Uh, the reward system um, is um, basically a, a redesign of the existing reward system, um, learnings from praise debate that uh, Griff mentioned, as well as source cred as a quantitative um, uh, uh, measure of contributions to the TEC. And then transparency, you know, the uh, when reflecting how amazing this digital library is this year, it really blows my mind. I don't know if there's any other organization that has a public recording of every working, every call of every working group since the beginning, so over a year of of, um, of videos just of all of our meetings. Uh, that's pretty extraordinary, and I think it's going to be interesting for future research purposes of bootstrapping a commons. Communications under Chewy's leadership is um, uh, is turning into a communications agency for token engineering. So it's a public good for token engineering, uh, providing to uh, communication services for not just the TEC, but many different uh, token engineering uh, organizations. Uh, one of their first um, projects that they'll be working on is communications for the Token Engineering Academy. And then legal, it seems like uh, lately they haven't had so much to do. Uh, they do have to, they are finalizing the terms and conditions. Uh, but this year, they, they've had an enormous year of productivity, 
writing, like facing um, the challenges of like navigating the the different like, like uh, laws around launching um, economies, uh, which is not clear in any jurisdiction, and writing legalese uh, for the terms and conditions and other uh, dApps that were launched this year. Um, and they're really attractive to people who are interested in these legal aspects of Web3. So it uh, was run, um, was was stewarded by Santi for many months, um, who had to um, take care of some personal uh, family matters. And Ivy has uh, taken on stewarding legal uh, to keep it moving forward and is doing a great job. And with that, I will pass to Maria. Thanks, Al. Uh, well, <laughs> what, uh, what a year <laughs> uh, with all happening in the TEC and, and in the common stack. Well, I, I arrive uh, in the middle <laughs> somehow and with Dine. Dine C and I have been storing the, the Trusted Seed uh, Garden. And I feel very, very blessed uh, of, of being part of not only the team, but this, uh, this community that every day uh, makes me grateful for, for, for working and, and creating things uh, for, to make it better every day. So uh, yeah, so the Trusted Seed launched actually in January uh, and we, we saw some, some tests uh, before, but it actually launched in January and uh, also the DAP. I will share my screen. Here it is. Yeah, the DAP. And um, yeah, so all this effort was, all this beautiful DAP was developed by uh, an amazing team of developers. Uh, some of the, the names that I heard were uh, Merlin, uh, Amin, Christopher jumped into, and all the, the, the team that was involved in this dab, uh, we are very grateful for you because this is actually the backbone <laughs> for our community. This is where everything starts uh, for our members. So thank you so much. And um, well, we have the stats uh, that never can, can never be missed on these calls. And uh, right now, at this moment, we are 334 members of the Trusted Seed. And um, in 2021, we had 681 applications. 681 people actually went to, the, to, the, to their computers, opened the application form, and, and went through it to be part of it. So uh, thank you so much for showing your interest. Hopefully we get a lot more next year and a lot more uh, activations for, for, for the next uh, 2022. Uh, also from of those 334 members, uh, six, uh, 78 were scholarships. And these scholarships were uh, through the Give It Trace. So, so yeah, part of uh, our, our commitment with our community is, the, is to uh, help valuable people to get uh, in, in, in this, uh, the trusted seat. So they were rewarded with uh, scholarships. You can see how August was our, our, our best <laughs> month, but it, it was because of the, uh, the TEC hatch. <laughs> That's why you will see a lot, a lot of people uh, in August activating like crazy because some people uh, waited for the for the last time, <laughs> for the last day to, to activate. But it's it's fun to see how August and July uh, were so representative for us uh, with the launch of the with the hatch of the TEC. Um, aha. So in the in this year also we had uh, two airdrops, one in August with EXO. Uh, we will be uh, now trusted seed members uh, can can vote and govern in the EXO uh, DAO, which is great because they work with uh, with for for the earth and uh, climate change and regenerative economies. So we as the trusted seed uh, are part of it, 
And also we got for December 24th, uh, a great Christmas gift <laughs> that was uh, Giveth, uh, Give Economy was launched and the trusted team members were part of it, uh, receiving GIF token, uh, tokens that uh, enable us to donate, govern, and, uh, and decide the future of, of the future of giving. <laughs> um, well, with that, uh, new things and new ch and changes uh, are happening in, in, our, in our work as the trusted seed gardeners. Part of it was the, the great work that Gina did with the Discord layout improvements. Uh, you will see that our Discord is, is better looking, <laughs> more organized, although there's still work in progress, for example, improving our onboarding process for, for new uh, members in Discord, also improving um, onboarding processes for contributors and um, and newbies in Web3 and, and, and crypto. But yeah, that was a, a great work by, by Gina and also uh, Loganat and Scott from, from our Trusted Seed community. Uh, we, uh, we are also thinking on uh, reschedule the community calls uh, in January. So be aware, uh, we will be announcing the new dates and the new hours for, for our community calls. Uh, this is something that uh, we can, we want to hear your, uh, your voice in case of any suggestions. So be aware because the, these are changes that are coming. Also, we had in December, the Trusted Seed Members Spotlight Call. It, that was actually a, 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 a way for us to, to, to see uh, how we can use the office hours call the, um, that we already had but uh, giving, giving it uh, a twist. <laughs> uh, with that, we, we created the member spotlight where uh, members of our community show, uh, showcase uh, their current projects outside the common stack. And the, the participants that we had uh, were Metodo with uh, Jamba Innovation uh, Academy that works in Tanzania. Uh, and we had Innovator, who is working on Printer Net Africa, which is, uh, is uh, an idea in, in progress uh, with him uh, and his team to bring uh, digital access to, to Africa, rural areas. Uh, with the, uh, after that uh, success of, uh, with the calls, we are taking those calls for the next year. And well, I hope to see um, all the members participating in the future because I really enjoyed uh, learning how our members outside the common stack are creating um, value and important changes for the, for the world. And uh, I would say uh, what the goals for, for us in the, in the gardening is that um, improve our onboarding processes our community feedback is very important for us. So we will be uh, hearing you guys uh, along the way. Every day we will be asking how we can improve our work. Also, uh, we want to improve our data management and increase our community engagement. We, we want to see more and, and, and want to hear more about, about uh, the work that is being doing inside the, the community, the trusted seat and outside uh, trusted seat. And I also want to praise <laughs> the, the guy who, who made me and Dine uh, be able to, to, to work on everything uh, here at, as, as a gardener, who is Dan. Uh, he, he is a still uh, our mentor <laughs> and advisor. So uh, we, we still go to him when, when things are not working and also when, <laughs> when we want to, to implement new things. Uh, he's, he's still there with us, and I want to send a major praise to him uh, for being there for us. Uh, and Gina, be, uh, because she's not here uh, in the call, she's in vacation, uh, on vacation, but her work is very important, and uh, it, it, it wouldn't be possible for me to show all this stuff uh, without her work. <laughs> uh, with that, I'll pass it to Ivy.
Thanks, Maria. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I can say that um, 2021 is, has been a very productive year for uh, the common staff and myself. So um, this year, I started as the uh, uh, providing support and to the operations of common staff. And then later this year, I transitioned to uh, leading comms. So I'll be uh, sharing more, uh, sharing the, the, the big things, the great things that happened in uh, comms. So let me share my screen. I'll do this one. So yeah. Um, on the medium, uh, on our medium page, we published um, 17 stories this just this year. So um, we uh, we have we the most recent one is the uh, ABC uh, series, and then we have also published um, stories from our uh, about our partnership with different um, organizations, region, and IXO, and we also started. Um, uh, posting um guest blog uh pieces so um so i want to praise um taxil anna marie uh vitor uh lauren chris and uh jeff for all their um for contributing to our medium page so um the top story for this year is the is this uh the zen the art of understanding common stuff. So there's a little uh, exp uh, explainer on um, on the work stream in uh, in our in common stuff. So um, yeah, and the other uh, top stories are the uh, the articles about the uh, TEC hatch and of course the region uh, foundation partnership. And then on Twitter, oops, I think it's frozen. Yeah, on Twitter. Uh, we have we now have five thousand one hundred eighty five followers. So it's uh this year we increased by, um, let me just check. We increased by uh three thousand two hundred ten followers just this year, and uh, it's a huge praise to um Ekene for helping us grow uh, our Twitter uh, followers. So um yeah, if you're not following us yet, uh just find a common sack at common stack on Twitter so uh, you can get more uh, more frequent updates on uh, on our from our organization and then on YouTube uh, let me see yeah so on our YouTube channel we've been uh, we've hosted several uh, monthly AMAs and the most recent one we started hosting uh, also um, themed AMA so you can see uh, we started uh, a host uh, an AMA with the Region Foundation and a themed AMA uh, about collaborative economics and um, bonding curve. So you can check out this playlist in our YouTube channel. And we also, uh, aside from the, those, we also um, posted uh, like, uh, I think 23 in total for this year, 23 um, sprint review videos. So we also have um, a playlist for that. So if you want to catch up on uh, the latest updates from our team, so you can just go to this playlist. And um, yeah, and then on the analytics, uh, we, we've we got uh, 6,920 views in the last uh, 365 days. And we have a total of 437 uh, subscribers now. So if you're looking for something to watch during this holiday, so... Um, yeah, jump into our YouTube channel. You can uh, watch a lot of um, yeah, interesting uh, videos from us, I hope, and informative ones. And what's next? The other thing. Yeah, so this is that. And then what else? Yeah, and then on our LinkedIn. Oh, this year we also started um, our LinkedIn page. I think this, I'm getting confused with this. Mm. Yeah, so uh, uh, with uh, Ekenet's help, we started um, our LinkedIn page, and uh, though we started, I think, middle of the year, we already have uh, 349 followers now, and we also share updates from, uh, from our community here. So yeah, follow us on LinkedIn. And the other thing that happened this year, we jumped into, uh, we participated in uh, four Gitcoin grant uh, rounds from round nine to uh, 12. And uh, praise to, uh, to Peter for coordinating the uh, communications campaign uh, 
on our on several uh, rounds. So um, we have so during these rounds, um, our trusted seed got the opportunity to vote for their top fifteen uh for their favorite uh fifteen grants that uh, will receive uh, additional matching funds from uh, our fan valid league. So um they. We use the conviction voting um conviction voting app to uh to vote for, so they can vote for their um favorite grants and um it's also on if you if you're curious on how to use the conviction voting app we have a walkthrough video for that in our um, YouTube channel and then um this year we also started um air dropping CS Love to um all trusted seed members who uh, activate their membership. So, um, and you can, uh, trusted members can actually use their uh, CS Love token to buy um, swag, the CS uh, Commasac swag. swag. Um, yeah, they can get a shirt or a cap. So, yeah. And um, in total, we have, uh, just this year, we have uh, 165 orders. And we, uh, we're shipping this worldwide any, in any part, wherever you are in this, uh, in, Wherever you are, we can uh, send you the swag if you activate your um, trusted seed membership. And um, also, last but not the least, and also a huge thing that happened uh, this year for Common Stack is our Discord. We launched the Discord server. So last year we were only on Telegram, but this year we uh, launched the uh, Common Stack Discord server, and we also integrated the praise bot there. So if in, if you're in our Discord server, you can start praising. Uh, any any member of our community so um yeah i want to uh, uh, a huge praise to uh chris ekene unacy and jess and peter for all their uh contributions to comms so yeah that's all from me and i will uh pass it to Thiago. Oh, thank you ivy um so um my part here is to talk about a little bit about the Regen partnership, uh, which is a, is already becoming a huge project. Uh, we had a couple of meetings this year with the Regen team and uh, the Common Stack team, the Trusted Seed, and um, we have covered a lot of details and a lot of uh, talking about token transfers and the community staking DAO and the endowment programs. And there's uh, a lot uh, to come uh, next year in 2022. So we're looking forward to continue discussing and uh, improving this project to becoming a, a major project with the partnership and with regen and the regenerative regenerative agriculture not only economics um, so a uh, huge praise for maria who has been helping me with uh, my buddy and with for jess and uh, the team from regen revati uh Heis and austin um, who have been helping a lot and we are very keen to looking uh, to build this partnership together. Uh, with that, I'll pass to Griff. Thank you, Tiago. And thank you all for watching this uh, the year end review. There's been so much going on. Oh my gosh, it's been huge. And uh, there's so many people to thank and praise, but I, I can't do it today. Like we couldn't. You know, at the end of these calls, they usually just rattle off for like 10 minutes. All the people who've raised, trying to do that for the year would just be incredible. I couldn't, I can't do it. So, sorry. But like, wow, so many people have, this. I'm sure hundreds and of contributors have been a part of the Common Stack mission this year. Uh, so thank you so much for helping us build uh, this, this incredible future that we're trying to build. And hopefully uh, 2022 will be twice as spectacular. So thank you all and uh, we'll see you next year.